Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon to everybody. Today, it's a beautiful day outside. I've just had a lovely call with somebody who is coming through one of the programs and I was doing a bit of a coaching session with her and I thought I'd get a message in before I just head away from my office here. And I want to talk about the fact that we are going into lockdown too. Oh, what a surprise. Who would have guessed that we were going to have a second lockdown? If you've been watching our podcasts earlier in the year, you might have actually picked up on that. It was a conversation I had with somebody who's pretty high up in the medical world. He said, just mark my words, November, it's gonna happen again, because traditionally every single year, this is a peak time, October to November, December, when colds, flus, and lots of people get seriously ill. Unfortunately, those statistics have completely been masked in this last several months, as you're probably aware, by what everything seems to have been done, which is throwing it onto COVID. But we won't get into that conversation uh, because that could be a big dark hole we could get into. What I want to talk about is what the hell are you going to do now? So there's talk about furlough being stretched out to March. So there's going to be a lot of people potentially at home. Lockdown for a month. Yeah, right. As soon as they said a month, my first reaction was, <laughs> which month are they going to stop it? So we're going to have to accept something here. And that is that we are... Um, yeah, well, it's a democratic society, isn't it? We're not under a dictatorship. We're not being told we have to stay in our homes, are we? We're not being told we, we can't go and eat here. We're not being told we can't meet with these people. That would never happen in this country, would it? Ah, November 2020, here we are. So lockdown two. My emphasis, my focus here right now is to ask you some serious questions about what the hell are you gonna do next? This is a serious space. Mental health is being seriously challenged for so many people. Without a doubt, there are increases in people who are feeling depressed, down, uh, and that was during the last lockdown, which, by the way, when there are longer days, more sunshine, generally people's demeanor is lifted and they feel more optimistic. Statistically, you get into winter months, people get more depressed. In fact, some of the highest depression rate uh, levels in the world are where there's short, short days. We won't go into that conversation, but essentially, you're waking up, it could be dark. You're going to bed, it could be dark. Not only that, you're not getting much sunlight, so there's certain considerations you have to put in place. And we have decided, by the way, on Cicado, www.cicado.com forward slash podcast, that we're going to do another interview with the amazing Robin Mel, who were with us beginning of the last lockdown. It's going to be in two weeks' time. You need to tune into this. You know, these are two people that literally provide advice and guidance into the government space and are just incredibly insightful to do with our health, our bodies, and what we can do to make sure that we stay physically and biologically healthy during what is going to be a very interesting and challenging, but also an opportunity to grow, period. So I might be pressing a few buttons here. You, you might be going, God, I understand what you're saying. Or you might be like, straight over your head. You might be thinking, screw you, Dr. O. I don't really agree with that. Anyway, either way, it doesn't really matter. I just want to share this message with you. So there's five things that I really want you to consider at this moment in time. Let me put them on the screen here for you, if I can find them. Here they go, right. So the first thing is, and I chose to do this many, many years ago. For some reason, people in my mum's generation don't seem to do this. They don't seem to know how to do it. And it's not being disrespectful, but, you know, you know, some people in my family, the older generation, I look around me and I meet people and go, yeah, my mum's the same or my parents are the same. It's like the news is gospel. What they hear in the news is fact and we gotta, we got to follow those rules. Uh, I had somebody just recently tell me that literally her mum, because she grew up during, you know, that sort of World War, post-World War, you know, late, the latter part of the Second World War anyway, uh, they followed rules. And so she's measuring the distance of two meters. She's checking to make sure people are staying a certain distance away because they're used to that. Whereas, you know, those of us that are a younger generation, we're like, really? I mean, come on, where's the science behind this, etc." And the problem you've got is you've got the noise from the American politics at the moment. You've got a whole bunch of information that's being sent to us and told to us at the moment about COVID. And, you know, you can choose to believe them or not, how accurate the tests, you know, I've even had a bit of an internal discussion with my own family on this. Anyway, that's another conversation. Point I want to make is, if you want to get focused, you're going to have to tune noise out or tune it down or bring the volume down on the noise that's going on. And I'm talking about the chatter that goes on on phones, on social media. Choose what you want to listen to over these coming months. What crap do you want to tune out? 
and what good stuff do you want to tune in? Because it is a choice and ultimately the only person that can make that choice is you. And that means being more effective with your time, being more effective with what you listen to and what you choose not to listen to. So that's the first thing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just talking about the news. I'm talking about social media. And oh my God, what this, they said this and they said this and somebody said this and somebody else said that. And you know, what about this? So number one, filter. Number two, what is your outcome? You've got a month, yeah, right, two months, we're going through Christmas into the new year. What do you want to achieve in this last two months of 2020? Is it going to be, I just want to chill out every night and watch Netflix or whatever it is you watch, Prime? Or actually, I want to study something new. I want to learn something new. I want to enhance myself. I want to grow. I want to expand. I want to go get fitter, a musical instrument. I talked about this in the last stretch on COVID. That hasn't gone away. It's the same freaking philosophy. I think what's happening at the moment is people are going, oh my God, here comes lockdown again and it's long nights, you know, dark early. In that case, what do you want to learn? Do you want to go learn how to trade the stock market? Do you want to go, and by the way, we're going to do interviews on that coming up fairly shortly on um, our podcast. Do you want to learn how to invest in property? Do you want to learn how to write a book? Do you want to spend more time with your kids and actually learn how to be a great teacher to your children? Do you want to learn how to learn calligraphy or learn a language, but something, grow, expand, but use this opportunity so that in years to come you go, you know what, during lockdown two, that's when I did this, that's when I learned, I did that, that's when I created this product. And that's another conversation as well, is what about if you wanted to go out and create something, something you could make that creates a legacy for your kids. Even if you wrote a small ebook or you create an audio program and made it saleable. And so in years to come, you go, yeah, I remember when I did that and look at the number of people I helped. But it has to be a passion project. What do you want that you're committed to? Because on a long, cold, wet, shitty day and you don't feel like doing it, you won't do it if you don't have passion attached to it. Number three, allocate some time. Even if it's an hour a day, it doesn't matter. Half an hour a day, two hours a day. You know, most people are spending an hour and a half to two hours watching TV and when it comes to longer months, it's even longer. Because what do they do? I don't want to go outside running, it's cold and wet. Can't get to the gym because of lockdown. Oh, you know what we'll do? Oh my God, I'm out and fit. And you hear all this stuff that people talk about. At least during the summer, you could get out and walk, you could enjoy the sun, you could go and do country walks and socially distance. We ain't got that opportunity now. People are gonna come back from, it's too dark to go for a walk. Not that it is, but probably. And also, there's no space, you know, no place I can go to. So what are you gonna do with your week? This is the chance to frigging completely change the way you structure your week. You gotta plan ahead and go, right, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm gonna study this. On two nights a week, I'm just gonna chill out and watch film, documentary, whatever it is, but the rest of the week, I'm studying. So very, very important. I cannot stress this enough. The next month to six weeks might feel like a long time, but it will go quickly and before you know it, we're into the new year and suddenly there's another announcement about an you know, extended lockdown or whatever. If you're furloughed, what are you gonna do with your time? This is a chance to actually create something, create memories, create a product or a service or whatever it is, write something, keep journals. I got myself a typewriter. I know it sounds crazy, but it's great, it's physical. I can't rush it, I can't dictate, I have to sit there and type, type, you know, type letters, etc. Fantastic. Number four, invest in you. Go study a subject, pay for it. Free stuff is okay, but you know what? You're gonna get more, more depth when you pay for things. So no matter what it is, whatever your subject is you wanna to choose to learn, even if you to study some human psychology or language, whatever it is for you, but invest in you. Because no one else is doing that right now. Your company's not investing in you. Government's definitely not investing in you. So the only person that's left is you to invest in you. What about your kids? I mean, my fiance is amazing. She's literally created a whole homeschooling environment now and she's finding some incredible learning tools which, quite frankly, make the schooling system look like, mm -mm, but we won't even go there. And then that comes to number five. What about your kids? And I have to have that same conversation with myself. I'm more and more learning to go, you know what, switch off for the rest of the day, spend some time with the kids. My daughter was reminding me, Daddy, can we have some time together? Because I was doing a three-day training this last weekend, so I didn't get a lot of time with them. I'll ask yourself the question, during this lockdown period, what could you do to create magic moments? And I want to talk about this on a separate podcast, but the emotional stress, the emotional instability, the uh, emotional 
turmoil that's going on in our children's minds at the moment, don't underestimate it. Mental health issues are really major right now and our kids do not have that same lifeblood expectancy that they would have going into Christmas. Everything is being dampened and we've got to find a way to take it to another level. So if you're a parent you're watching this, maybe you can pass it on to a friend of yours who maybe isn't doing this, or well, maybe that's not the right reason to pass it on, but either way, what I'm saying is, think magic moments. I remember Tony Robbins using this term years ago, and I thought, I like that term, magic moments. What magic moments can you learn to create for your children? So my daughter wants to make some compost boxes for our garden, because we've got quite a big garden, and she's like, Daddy, you know, all this stuff that we're eating, why don't we compost it? We've been composting for a while, but it's in a general area. I'm like, great, so we're going to get the tools together, and we're going to do that. And I said, well, we could go get one of those ones from the garden centre. No, Daddy, I want to make them. Fine, let's do that. She wants to make a, uh, a bird house for a member of our family. I won't say in case that member of the family is watching. So she wants to do that as well. These are projects which are hands-on. Children need to be hands-on right now. They do not need to be fucking watching this stuff, which, by the way, flashes up subliminal messages all the time. And we won't go into that conversation. And social media now is designed to absolutely make them addictive. Uh, so, you know, if <sighs> go and watch The Social Dilemma on Netflix. It's a documentary, not a movie. And it will absolutely get your brain going, what the hell have I got my kids doing this for? Let's take them off this and let's put them onto something practical where they can get their hands dirty and get involved. Anyway, that's enough of the parent stuff. All right, hopefully that was useful. A bit of motivation, a bit of inspiration. This is going to be an incredible two months. Think of it now, right through to the new year. How can you make this fucking amazing? November and December of 220, when you look back and you go, oh my God, what an incredible, do you remember that? Do you remember that period? Everyone was in lockdown, do you remember that? That was incredible. How can you make it fucking amazing? Put some messages on here if you get a chance. Tell me what you want to do to make it amazing. It's Dr. Rose signing out. See you on my next live.